Hello, everybody. You are looking live at uh, one of the great events that has taken place here in the Fort Myers community. Uh, it is the grand opening of the reimagining of the new facility for AIDS Healthcare Foundation, also known as AHF, right here in the main corridor in the heart of the city of Fort Myers on 41. It is a spectacular facility uh, with all the bells and whistles. We're so proud to see their expansion and to see them realize their full potential here and bring in the full health care and education and prevention information to people in the area who will need it as an ongoing thing. AIDS has and HIV has evolved to a chronic disease that can be uh, cared for and you can live a full life if you get proper service and follow direction so it is no longer the you're going to die in 13 weeks. So without further ado, let's meet some of the great citizens in our community that I consider heroes because they are on the ground educating and keeping people alive. Let's begin. We'll start back here with you, Ebony. Tell us who you are and where you come from and what you, are, what you, what you do as it relates to what we're here for today. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Ebony Crispin. I'm the Director of Legislative Affairs and Community Engagement for AHF South. That means I cover states in the south, southern part of the United States, the Caribbean, and South America. Legislative Affairs, that sounds pretty <laughs> big time. You're there testifying before legislators, or are you walking the halls in these different municipalities, getting the word out, getting that funding? Yes, sir, all of those things. Come on, Ebony, expound a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm a talk show host. I took your stuff. I said your stuff. Yes. All right, all right. Give me a typical day of okay. what you do. Okay. So uh, it includes everything from AIDS and HIV, obviously, but we also do work around low income and very low income housing. That does sometimes include HAPA, uh, which is housing for people living with AIDS. Um, but we got into the low income housing business because when you think about the disparities that people in community face, housing is always number one. Um, that causes some people to either stay out of care or fall out of care, um, as well as food disparities. Um, and so we have Healthy Housing Foundation, which is a subsidiary of AHF, as well as Food for Health. And we do so because if you are doing the work of being of service in community, you're considering all sides of how uh, a resident of, in this case, Fort Myers, is living and experiencing their world. And sometimes that means being a week away from getting kicked out of their home. That means not having food to provide their, themselves and their children. And that also means that we are, are looking at the whole person. Mm -hmm. um, and so for us, that means articulating and knowing what their needs are, which includes housing, health care, and food. Yes. When you see what we're witnessing here today, this fine facility, being open and uh, being all inclusive under one roof. Uh, how does this make you feel? Mm. Oh, Mr. Pitts, you're not gonna make me cry today. Oh, really? We're gonna get my Oprah, I'm gonna get some Oprah? No, you're not I want my Oprah now. <laughs> Go ahead and cry now, I need my Oprah stuff. No, no, no. I, it just, it really warms my heart. I think when, when people think about uh, what AIDS looked like in the 80s and 90s. There were AIDS clinics and all the stigma and narrative that is associated with that terminology, unfortunately. But now to walk into a healthcare center as beautiful as this one that looks like any primary doctor's office that any one of us would go into, it means that people can feel a sense of home and community when they are getting the care that they need in order to what you pointed to earlier, which is a beautiful life where they're thriving and live a long life like, life like anyone else. And so it just means the world to me that we're able to continue to do this work. Well, thank you for giving me some wonderful sentences. <laughs> Great job, Ebony. One of the, one of the, one of the um, lovely things about me being the host of Lee Pitts Live over the last uh, 33 years when I created the show, I didn't know it was going to evolve to all of this one day where I would be able to go out and cover grand openings and things like this for great organizations in our community. Over the years, all three of them have appeared on my TV show, and this is just so much fun to see all of us come back together uh, in this magnificent setting. My man right here, in fact, is one of the early guys that got me involved in, in getting the word out. So I'm, I'm really excited about catching back up with him as well. I'll stop what I say, my friend. Not bullet it, Pitt. Hey, let me say, they gave me an opportunity, man. <laughs> Thank you. Give your full name, though, make, um, what you do. My name is Harry Marius. I am with 
the health department. I am the HIV AIDS program coordinator. I coordinate seven counties. So my position basically in title is the regional HIV AIDS coordinator. You have been at the ground level today to see something like this in our community. What does that do in terms of the health department and trying to continue its mission as well in terms of partnering? Wonderful. Uh, us from the health department standpoint, we have a mission. We have a duty and ob an obligation to our communities. We collaborate with all partners to make sure that services are being delivered to those that may not be able to come to the service or those that are also able to work to the service. Having AHF here at the moment, such a big unit, and also right of 41, we are creating access to care. This is wonderful, it's beautiful. And I have to also add that um, AHF is one of our great collaborators. It, it's dated back when ICANN actually was here. We, they were only outreach. They were only prevention now that they are prevention and patient care at the same time. It's beautiful lipid. That word prevention is something that we should always keep at the forefront. Absolutely, yes. And it costs less in reality. Patient care costs a lot of money. If we were able to prevent everyone from actually being diagnosed with HIV, then we would save so much. And a healthier community, as you have heard it before, basically begins with having everybody healthy in that community. Mm -hmm. It warms my heart to see everybody partner. I noticed that in the movement over the years, because I was on the ground, somewhat on the ground level with my television show right on 1991. I was the only TV show around here talking about it uh, through Bobo. Y'all remember Robert Bobo? Yes, we He pulled me to the side. He said, Lee, you got this TV show. And let me tell you something you need to be talking about. Nobody else wants to talk about it. Now it's kind of commonplace. People do talk about it out loud. Yeah. But that was around 19, uh, Ebony, that was around 1990 when I first started my television show. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you for telling. <laughs> but Robert Bobo, I don't know if you got to meet him. He's a legend, yes. and all y'all met. But he recently passed. But pulled me to the side. He said, "Lee, you know, blah 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 blah." Because you know the Magic Johnson thing had hit, yes. and then yes. he said, "You need to, you know, do something with your TV show to educate the people." And he specifically said, "A lot of people from the minority community, the African American at that time, were leaders in getting the virus and, and dying from AIDS and all of that." Per, you know, per capita, we need to get the word out. And so I started having those interviews and now here we are, I'm still doing this and I'm really loving being a part of the, of the whole movement. And then there you go, I come out to the park one day and there you go, coming on my show, doing your educational stuff. Tell people who you are and what you do. Hey, good morning. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Pito. Meet with you again. It's a pleasure. Always, Always. a pleasure. Love you to death. So my name is Kathleen Boudot. I'm working for uh, the Lee County Health Department. I'm the regional uh, representative for the surveillance department. So I report all the HIV and AIDS cases for Lee, Charlotte, Andrew, and Glitz. But that doesn't stop me from here mm. because my passion working in the field of HIV is dated from 2000. Mm -hmm. I've been working in the field since And I was 2000. only two years old then. Yes. I was not even born, but I was still working because it's in my heart. So the, I take it very seriously, especially when you have the majority of the people who are affected by the virus is African American. Right. Whenever you speak about HIV, I feel you speak about me and my Haitian community, which is very dear to my heart. So therefore, I'm here working with Mr. Marius, who's also my supervisor, is a great supporter, and we work together to continue the changes that needs to be done in the community and to work collaboratively with HF, which is a great partner. Very good. You know, what it does to me is it makes me go to sleep at night knowing that people like him, I've been around him so long, the guy never stops. You know, he's on the move, he's educating, he's trying to do his, his level best. Knowing that you guys are out there doing your best to make sure that people are informed. She mentioned, because you're keeping all these stats, right? Yeah. Uh, and I know you come on my show many times and talk about the disproportionate. Let's, before we, I don't want to make it a, a whole thing about that, but I want to talk about why some of the things that you guys are observing, they're not necessarily scientific facts or whatever, you guys are not stating the fact, but it's things that you're observing in terms of the uh, minority African-American community uh, in terms of being educated and following all these preventive things, what what is it? A, is it a stigma? Is it a 
uh, people don't like to talk about it out loud or what it, what it, what it is. When you talk about stigma, I see stigma as the big umbrella, but under stigma, you have a lot of range of issues, barriers that stop people from accessing services. And we see that on a daily basis. And this is our job to continue the education, to remove the stigma, the way we approach people. You, he you heard it earlier. When we come to people with a smile, we build trust. Once you build trust in people, they can come to treatment without any effort because they trust you. So poverty, homelessness, um, uh, language barrier, all those cause stigma, cause issues for people to, uh, uh, to enter care. So we must understand that even though it's not as high profile in terms of publicity, it is still with us and never, probably never will go away in our lifetime. Ebony, I heard you back there kind of amen into the corner. You want to add on to something she said? I, I, I would just also articulate that the importance of us being in community and engaging with different communities, with leaders who are, that look like the community that they serve, as well as unifying other communities so people see that this is not a gay disease, it's not a black disease, it's not a young disease, that people have to be, have to know from their leaders, from their families, their friends, from institutions like AHF and the Department of Health, for example, that the way that we prevent, the way that we end the epidemic is by continuing to educate and to be in community and help to sort of navigate through stigma. I think stigma is an interesting word. So the last thing I'll share is, while I agree that stigma is what is plaguing our community when it comes to addressing the epidemic, I think sometimes stigma is also cultural background. It's also religious beliefs. It's, yes. it's the generation you came from, and that's not negative. So I think we also need to meet people where they are and help them to understand that part of what's happening is that if you know more, then you can do more, then you can um, address the issues within your community and your family that sometimes is not simply about stigma, although that is to the point that was made, it is the larger umbrella, but it's also maybe a belief system that I think institutions like AHF and others can help um, to break and, and help get through to people to say, hey, it's more than just what you believe. This is about your health, your health care, and the health of your children and family. So. Mm -hmm. Just like any other health. Exactly. I noticed uh, when, uh, when I'm listening to in Broward County, and, uh, and it's different here in Lee County, and I'm coming to you on this in this area, but it seems like the schools have figured out a way to try and at least educate uh, children at a young age. I know I got a call asking if it was okay. They were letting us know that they were going to be teaching education around that in school that particular week coming up or whatever, and if the parents were okay with it. So that, that seemed to me to be a lot of progress. I agree. I think... Um Frankly, I think school boards can do more in order to help educate children, families and their children. Um, but I think there are ways for us to be able to um, work with communities in order to educate young people. Um, and I think one of those ways is by partnering with organizations. Um, and again, institutions like the Department of Health that do have the statistics and can take that information and articulate it to people in a way that's digestible so they can understand, here's what these numbers mean for your family, for your children. Um, because I know it's a sensitive topic for a lot of people, but I think schools and communities can do more in order to further educate what sexual education means um, as we matriculate our children through their high school into adult time. Okay. Let's come back over here to you. Two things. One, she talked about the, uh, well, I want you to expound on the fact that the, st the negative stigma that was placed on the gay community, the African American community, the, the disenfranchised as being the main carriers uh, uh, of AIDS or uh, HIV. People have, have people come to the understanding that anybody, everybody, all ages pretty much can be uh, can, can get, get get the virus. Anyone from the age of 13 all the way to, you know it, if you're sexually active, can actually uh, contract HIV. The bad publicity big begun long time ago, we inherited. However, we have done an amazing job in terms of uh, collaborating with multiple sectors to make sure that education is being shared across the board. Um, maybe uh, what sets me apart from perhaps people doing what I do in different areas is the fact that here in Area 8, we have a lot of providers 
they have the appetite, the eagerness to collaborate. So when I came on board as a HIV program coordinator, I took that as an opportunity to make sure that there is a bridge, there is that connection between all the providers, regardless of where they are and what they do. So therefore, we have partnered with churches, we have partnered with simple, small organizations to ascertain that they help us carry the mission. We cannot do it alone as just public health providers. We have to be cognizant of the fact that People are everywhere and we have to be everywhere at the same time. So therefore, one person cannot duplicate to be everywhere. So we have to make agents. We created agents in order for that mission to continue. Um, the stigma will be there. It, we, just, we just have to work smarter. Like Ebony stated earlier, you have to take into consideration the culture, the, 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 the belief that the person has. And also, when you are dealing with a person from a different back background, there is a lot that needs to be learned. There is a lot that needs to be understood. If these are not being understood, then you don't stand a chance to succeed. So stigma is there, but we have done a great deal of work to bypass stigma, to get into uh, the, 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 the important parts of these individuals' life. What I've have witnessed so far is that some individuals may be very hard to reach or have had some challenges in their lives to connect with healthcare. So if you take a different approach, give them the tool, make them aware, provide that education, then they become successful themselves. So it is to say that not everybody needs to be held or carried. They just need to have a way to get to where they need to, uh, to see, get. Y'all hear that? The uh, people are listening to us on my FM radio show. This should be there, and they're also uh, watching us on television. The uh, I want you to just uh, where are we in terms of Lee County area school districts? There, it, there is a ban on any type of education to students in the district. I would say just Florida itself has been challenging. However, we never stop working. Okay. We continue to collaborate with everyone. If the health department cannot go to certain functions, we have partnerships that work very well for us where they can do what needs to be done. Um, it is not unique to Florida. Okay. Health department, I want people before we wrap this up to distinguish what the health department does say as opposed to hospitals and clinics and things of that nature. You're not that. You you are bigger oversight in the concept? Yes, in reality, we have multiple packets, if I can say that word. We have multiple departments, and each department handles something different. Okay. My department, when it comes to HIV, our job is to make sure that all the entities like AHF, they are able to function and deliver the best that they can to our communities. And that begins with today. As we are talking here, we are educating as we are here today. And AHF is expanding on their services. So that means that the health department is a supporter. The health department is a collaborator. The health department ascertains that everything that is needed for any agency to function, we provide that as we can. Thank you. We got a chance to, people getting a chance to tour this facility. When you move around, you see all types of things that you may not have expected to see. Wonderful, first class, everything. And then I saw clothes. I saw food. I just saw, it looks like, I saw a pharmacist. It just seemed like when you come here, everything is under one roof. How does that make you feel? I'm not surprised because I know. I'm not surprised because I know what HF can do because I worked for them in the past. I I traveled to Haiti with them. I traveled to Washington and keep do keep the promise with them. I believe this is an organization that can deliver. They do great work, and I am not surprised because I worked in their environment before. I know what they can do for the population, and they really down to hurt to hurt with the population they are serving. Mm -hmm. Yes. Final question, Ebony, when people leave leave here today, what do you hope that they experience from this ribbon cutting and what do you hope they go back out into the community and tell the story about? I hope that they know that if something takes place where they need to get tested and therefore treated, that this is a home 
where we are building community, not just with the residents here in Fort Myers and Lee County, but with agencies like the Department of Health. And I think a lot of people don't realize that there are institutions that are here to build back community and continue to build communities that have been around for a long time. So that's what I hope is that people know that there's a community here to support them. Same to you, same question. Oh, well, I think they, they, the, the clients will feel um, this is a place, this is their home, this is where they're gonna come, they find everything at one place. One stop shop, they do everything, and I believe in that too. Mm -hmm. One stop shop, yeah. When uh, clients leave today, I, I my hope is that they remember AHF was at a smaller location. Now they are at a bigger location and more beautiful and fancier, if I can say that. Yes. <laughs> that there is everything is being done for them to make sure that when they walk in a place, it looks like where they dream to be, where they yes. want it to be. It certainly looks like AIDS Healthcare Foundation is on the uptick and here to stay and continue to provide a very important service to this area of the state. Uh, and we're so thrilled that uh, Lee Pitts Live was able to be the media sponsor today and come out and cover this from gavel to gavel. We'll be getting some more interviews later, but I want to thank all of you guys for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, this has been very educational. So remember, Miami might have the oranges, but AIDS Healthcare Foundation has got the juice. We'll be right back. Hello everybody, this is Lee. I'm so glad that you watched that particular show. And if you enjoyed that show, we got other shows like that. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch Lee Pitts Live on demand anytime. And also hit us up on all our social media platforms. Just type in Lee Pitts Live and there you go.